Well, to look at what we can expect from BP's earnings, I'm joined by Jonathan Barrett from Commodity Broking Services. Jonathan Barrett, welcome to Business Today. Yeah, good morning, Whitney. Now, firstly, as we heard, there are reports that BP's boss, Tony Hayward, will walk away with a big pension. How will shareholders react to that news? Uh, look, Whitney, I think it's going to be quite interesting. It's a lot of money. I think when you've lost sort of close to 40% of the value of your shares, I think it's a bit of a concern. Um, but on the other side, he's actually leaving a company, believe it or not, that, that is well-groomed uh, to handle the concerns uh, ahead of us. Uh, why do you say it's well-groomed to handle the concerns? Well, generally you look at the profit forecasts which are coming up and they're tipped to be upwards of close to um, you know, 48% up on, on expectations. So that's a, that's a very good result for BP. Uh, we've also seen obviously the value of crude, but when you look at uh, the whole package prior to the disaster that we've seen, you have had a company that has been managed quite well and, uh, and I think going forward uh, it will continue to be managed. They've just got to get over the hurdle of, of what's happened in the Gulf. Do you think, though, that just a change of management will be enough to get them past the hurdles of the last, you know, three, four months? I think it's going to have to be some very strategic management uh, occurring. I think the new boss, Dudley, is, uh, is, is, I think, the right choice, given that he is American. But there are a lot of hurdles, a lot of unforeseen, and I think the market will look towards a program, a proper program in place, uh, once it's all capped, to allow the shareholders a bit of breathing space to say, hey, look, we still remain a very strong and profitable company. We've just got to get over these concerns. Well, as you say that he is uh, the incoming... Uh chief of BP is American, you think that's a strategic choice on their part to, to, to pick someone who is American given the catastrophe that's happened on the Gulf? Whitney, I, I think I'd have to say yes it was. I think it's been... Cynical as it is. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. I mean, you can see the comments from Barack Obama, you know, and he's, he's been quite hard on BP. Um, you know, there are a lot of concerns out there. Remember, 40% of BP's investors are actually American. So I think the move, it's a fresh face for BP, um, given that he's also uh, spent a lot of time in the Gulf region. I think he's a logical choice uh, for the shareholders, also a logical choice to help BP manage the concerns, uh, manage the concerns out of the Gulf, particularly with the Barack um, administration. So, yes, it's a little bit political, but I do think it's probably the right choice. All right. Now, as you mentioned, uh, BP's forecast for its results is, is to be up about 40%. If it hadn't suffered the impact of the Gulf of Mexico spill and the clean-up, what would have been the, uh, the forecast there? I think, I think the forecast would still be there. It's, I think it's more the provisioning um, that we're looking at. Um, when you see the profit um, or the expected earnings and profits are going to be quite positive, I think the market, the market has taken that news already quite nicely with shares actually rising in London last night. But I think the market's now going to angle for how they're going to provision for the expected losses and the cost of the clean-up. Remember, it is anticipated that the, uh, that the overall cost could be as much as uh, $35 billion. And when you look at the amount of asset sales that they're bringing to the market, there's still a big gap. So I think the key for BP's um, price, uh, price moving forward will be how the board actually provisions uh, for this litigation or the litigation which will commence, I guess, once the clean-up campaign's finished. And do you think that shareholders will be concerned or nervous about that and, and the market in general because, you know, those clean-up costs could sort of hit the bottom line in future profits? Well, that's going to be the key. I think that's what we've got to look for. I mean, you know, BP's uh, certainly up close to 35 to 38% from its lows. So I think the investors really want to see uh, how it's going to be managed, um, how the asset sales are going to be managed as well. Um, remember what you could look at. BP, um, you know, could actually sell only a portion of its North Sea wells and, and get this out of, out of the way. So I, I feel it's the, the key is in the management of the disposal of assets to enable them to provision for the litigation and the costs moving forward, which could last for anywhere up to five to ten years. So are you confident that BP will recover fully from this, uh, this oil spill debacle? I mean, many were predicting that it was the demise of the company. I think they will. It, as I mentioned at the beginning, they, they are a well oiled, excuse the pun, uh, <laughs> company. Um, you know, and they've proven that by having a whole loyal, uh, loyal set of investors. I think they will get through it and I think they'll probably be stronger for it and I think the industry uh, will be stronger as a result of what's occurred. So if anything, they will get behind, they will get over it. Remember, 
it, the profitability is dictated by the price of oil. So if the price of oil starts to move higher, that's going to make BP's management make it a lot easier for them to come over these concerns. All right, now, Jonathan Barrett, we're nearly out of time, but I just want to briefly look at, uh, despite this oil spill, we've seen BP launch its drilling program into uh, Libyan offshore waters. Is this kind of activity worth a risk for producers at the moment? Look, I, I think it, it always is because it is the easiest form of energy, getting energy out of, the, uh, out of the wells, out of the sea, deep drilling. It is the easiest way to get it, uh, to get the energy. It really is a matter for governments to change to alternatives that will ease the pressure on the demand for oil and ease the, the pressure on exploration. And uh, I think whilst we've still got that demand there, BP and other companies will continue to mine, continue to put deep wells uh, in, so because it's purely a profitable concern, they need that profitability for the bottom line, particularly for BHP at the, uh, BP at the moment. All right, Jonathan Barrett, we'll have to leave it there, but thanks for your time today. Thanks, Whitney.